Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Health for Niger. My name is Dr. Ngozi Onoha. I'm your host. This podcast provides inspiration, knowledge, entertainment, and education. We have a very special guest today, all the way from Vancouver in Canada. Join me in welcoming Dr. Siegel. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Very exciting. All right. So your name? Yes. Mikael Siegel? That's right. Yeah. I got it. You got it. Good job. (laughs) Okay. Dr. Siegel is a physician and a certified life coach who loves to help people and organizations reach their top potential. She loves to coach on building resilience and finding tools to help cope with stress, as well as finding the path to upgrade your mind, body, and soul. She coaches and runs workshops on building resilience in Vancouver, Canada, and also worldwide. So you have a global outreach because Mm -hmm. of the internet, right? That's right. So welcome. Thank you so much. Really a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me. So coaching is now the latest hot topic. Everybody's Mm -hmm. doing coaching. Mm -hmm. How did you get into coaching? Why did you get into coaching? Why is coaching important? Wow, very good questions. Okay. (laughs) Um, Well, I think, I mean, my journey to coaching started um, quite a few years ago, but it was more of a gradual buildup. I just... um, was, you know, practicing, I've been practicing um, in acute care medicine for many years, and just realizing that I wanted to shift my, um, the way I practiced and how I help people um, into more of a holistic approach. And um, I kind of just discovered coaching a few years ago and realized, wow, this really fits with my values, with my, you know, with my, my goals, and is really in alignment. And i felt that with my skills, um, it was a, it was a really good fit for me. Um, and just where my interests were and in kind of just helping people approach any kind of, um, problem by, you know, empowering them, allowing them to find, um, tools to tackle whatever it is that they're going through. Okay. Yeah. So why is it so popular? All of a sudden, everybody <laughs> wants to be a coach. I think, I think it's because, you know, I think especially uh, having been two years in a pandemic, people, most people are feeling burned out mm-hmm. and um, looking, looking for something to sort of help them manage and cope with you know, this, all the stresses that are going on in the world. So I don't know if there's so many people that are wanting to be coaches and maybe there's just people are realizing there's a need for coaching and there's people that are kind of jumping in to fill in the gaps. Um, I think it's, it's more of that, that, you know, there's an acknowledgement that um, most people are suffering right now and, and could use some, some tools and, you know, ways to sort of become more empowered yeah I I was listening to a CME program by the Mm -hmm. American Academy of Family Practitioners and um, the speaker said that um, COVID is um, anxiety provoking the whole pandemic has been anxiety Mm -hmm. provoking for many reasons really Mm -hmm so many reasons and it appears that anxiety is on the increase and oh yeah um, a lot of mental health concerns with this pandemic so yeah i can see how coaching can help people in terms of just moving forward Mm -hmm. and coping with this Mm -hmm. uh, pandemic Mm -hmm. which we've been now in pandemic for over two years so why why in particular are you interested in re- resilience i like i i i like resilience um and you know the concepts around it because um there there are known tools that you can teach people and it has been shown that you can actually 
increase your resilience. So there is, you know, there's science behind the tools and there's science to show that you can make a difference by kind of learning the tools and applying them. So, you know, I think, and it, it kind of applies to any piece of your life that you're struggling with, um, you know, relationships, productivity, um, you know, you man it, you know, you know, any given problem that you have that you would like to fix or improve on, you can kind of use these tools and it will help you cope. So um, it's just an area that I find interesting. And I think most people, given the chance to learn these tools, can definitely improve their life. That's interesting because mm -hmm. I didn't know there were tools for resilience. Mm -hmm. I just thought resilience was something that <laughs> you went through a difficult time. Yeah. And you survived it. Yeah. And you became automatically resilient because yeah. you went through a difficult time. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's interesting. So they, I mean, one study they did looked at, um, you know, a group of kids who um, some of them had a really tough childhood and some of them had a really easy childhood and some of them kind of had, you know, a few sort of setbacks um, that they had to overcome, but nothing extreme. And they found that the kids that, that were kind of in the middle that had a few step backs were the, were the most resilient as adults. So it, it looks like, you know, having a few step backs and being able to learn from them helps. You don't want too many setbacks right. um, and you don't want like a super easy, breezy childhood either, because then you never learn them. But so you, there is some learning in, 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 you know, going through some challenge, but um, there's a limit. And yeah, a lot of people do think that, you know, you are born with a certain amount of resilience and it doesn't change, but the science has shown that that's not, not true. Actually, there's, there's lots of tools. There are, there are some things that are more genetically ingrained. So um, for instance, like how positive you are, you can, you can move, you know, you can become a little bit more positive, but that seems to be a little bit more inherited in terms of your sort of your outlook on life. But there is, there's is still, there's still room to move on that as well. Okay. So someone who doesn't have resilience can actually train themselves yes. or with the right tools or be exactly. coached yeah. to, to being resilient. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I did not mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how can they get more info? How if someone is listening to this conversation and they want mm -hmm. to be more resilient, yeah. how can they get information? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, in terms of what the term of res like, what does resilience mean? I mean, you you kind of nailed it when you kind of when you said um, it's the way to sort of bounce back from any kind of hardship. And actually, some people take it a step further and say it's actually coming back from a hardship and actually growing and becoming even, you know, stronger. So there, there are some different definitions. There's no one set definition of what it means to be resilient, but um, I would say, you know, if you are finding that you're not coping with stress that well, if you're feeling burnt out, um, there's, there's lots of different, you know, places that you can look you could look to coaching you could contact me I'm sure there you know you could you could google um, and search for um, other coaches that are coaching on that um, and there's lots of different um, tools on the internet as well so okay. yeah. all right that that is that is really helpful so how can okay how can people find you? Where can they find you? Are you on Instagram? <laughs> I am on Instagram. Okay, yeah, okay, so let me follow you now. Uh, What's it's your handle? Mikhail Siegel MD. Okay. I'm on Instagram, Mikhail Siegel MD. I am on LinkedIn and I'm also on Facebook. Same thing, Mikhail Siegel MD. Okay. And I do have a website as well, which is Mikhail Siegel MD.com. So um, any of those places you can reach out and I'd love to chat with you more about what it is you're looking for and find ways in which we could work together. Okay. So on your Instagram, mm -hmm. you have a link, yeah. which is a discovery call, right? And, yes. That's okay. Right. Yeah. So there's a 15 minutes uh, appointment. Yeah. A free uh, discovery call. Okay. Um, if you 
are interested in, in chatting with me and finding out if we would be a good fit to work together. Got it. Got it. So, yeah. Okay. That's brilliant. So usually I, I like my guests to share one pearl with the audience, one pearl of wisdom. Pearl. Just Yes. Just one, <laughs> one pearl of wisdom. So if you had okay. to, what would you, you know, well, share with the audience? What I, one of the things that I found fascinating when I was doing my, um, my research on this is that, you know, one of the greatest predictors of um, like a life of happiness, um, which is linked to resilience is social connection. So one of the big studies they did um, showed that, you know, more than socioeconomic status, more than your, your education, more than almost anything, it was um, that, you know, uh, and it was like, it was long, connected to longevity and happiness was, um, how many social connections a person had in their lifetime. Um, and that was one of a study done out of Harvard. And, um, and it, it also um, showed that it's not even, um, you know, your, it's close connections, but also just, you know, authentic connections with strangers also um, makes a difference. So um, I would say, you know, just, you know, if you, if you have like a, one or two small conversations with someone on the street, someone in line when you're buying your coffee, as long as they're authentic um, and you just focus on those kind of things as well as building your, your true close connections. Um, that alone is a good start and probably one of the best things you can do, um, you know, finding ways to connect with people and even the small um, connect, short connections you make um, day to day with strangers can can build your resilience and improve your overall health and well-being that is interesting you say that um, mm -hmm. i was on a train ride recently yeah. and um i sat beside a gentleman who was telling me about his trip and then he recommended a movie to me called 83 yeah. which is a story about the Indian cricket team yeah. that was led by Kapil Dev and it was so interesting so mm -hmm. I came home and we watched this movie and then when I went into town I stopped to buy um something at a vending machine mm -hmm. and I said to the guy I said um you know where you're from and he said he was from India and I said well have you watched this movie called 83 mm -hmm. the story of the cricket captain Kapil Dev and he said yes and he mm -hmm. he's, he just started he was so excited his whole <laughs> demeanor just changed wow and then he now recommended he said oh you gotta watch these two movies and the, the transaction just became so different yes. you know yes I had changed from just a customer coming to buy something from yes. him to now yes. I had mentioned you know yes. this cricket team and all of a yes. sudden his whole face just lit up and wow. he was so excited and he now yeah. recommended these two movies to me so you yeah. are right making yeah. those connections they, yeah. they the social connections are very very important yeah. you know where I'm from in Nigeria uh, people you know back in the day maybe not so much now they used to have these street parties where they'd mm -hmm. block the the road the street and they'd have mm -hmm. these very sort of um very robust you know street mm -hmm. parties with a band live band and food and and this is something a lot of people really looked forward to you know especially mm -hmm. um, at the end of a long week and mm -hmm. then have something to look forward to you get dressed up mm -hmm. um, and you go to these uh, street uh, you know very sort of cla cla classy uh, traditional you, you get to hear some of the authentic music you eat some mm. of the you know very nice street food you mm -hmm. know jollof rice mm -hmm. and so that is something that I always remember as mm -hmm. a part of my childhood growing up and having access to those street parties they were always uh, very very much fun so mm -hmm. I really yeah. appreciate what you said about mm -hmm. the social connections that they're, they're very important. I, I think yeah. especially more so now with the pandemic, everybody has been isolated yeah. on lockdown. Exactly. Yeah. Which is probably one of the main reasons that mm -hmm. people are feeling so, you know, their mental health is so, is suffering so much. Yeah. People know. are frazzled, tired, mm -hmm. burnt out. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 
I've enjoyed this conversation yeah, and um, <laughs> I'm going to put your website link oh, in the description you. of the podcast okay. and I thank you so much for yeah. uh, coming to share information about your coaching services and sharing pearls of wisdom I certainly have learned a lot from this conversation well, thank you for having me and being so persistent about following up. <laughs> I know. Well, it's taken us like we, uh, we both say, were traveling around the world. Yes, so a few months to uh, to schedule this to back and forth, back yes. and forth. <laughs> but we, so did by, it. <laughs> we did it. Finally, ni nice to finally get to meet you. Yes, likewise. Thank you. So, everyone listening, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your time. Please like comment, subscribe, and share this podcast with mm -hmm. your friends. Bye for now. Bye. 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 <laughs> Take care. So fun meeting you. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Thanks Bye again. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.